Ciputra Atra Surupam Rupam Tasya Karja Muri Purim Mathurim Koshtvati Radha Sri Guru Tanatos Gurave Gauda Chandrai Radhika Yitadali Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tad Bhakta Yanamon Ananda Lila Maya Vikrahai He Thus my maha prema rasa pradaya Chaitanya chandra yanamona Chaitanya chandra yanamona Chaitanya chandra yanamona Bhattavi Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Parama Gurudev through Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parama. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, By the causeless mercy of Sri Guru and Baranga, we have been hearing from, uh, from the Sri Bhajan Rahasya of Sri Labhaktinot Thakur. In the first chapter, we discussed Sarta faith. How by hearing the glories of the Holy Name from the lips of a sadhu, then, at least at first, we developed the 
conviction that this name of Krishna is Krishna himself. And with that conviction, we begin to chant. Receiving initiation, engaging in the activities of bhakti according to rules and regulations by the bhakti. We perform bhajana kriya. And if one is consistent, persistent, persevering, trying again and again to be steady in one's practice, then anatta nivriti will take place. Jaito darpana marja. All the unwanted attachments, worldly desires, misconceptions, and the intoxication of bodily identification, they'll start to be removed. And chitaikagra, one-pointedness, steadiness of the chitta will come. Very wonderful. Then our vision of the world becomes inverted. Actually, it was already upside down. It becomes the right way up. <laughs> Just like children, they play a game of spinning around, around them. until they become dizzy, then they fall over. And then when they're lying on the ground, they see all the trees are going up. <laughs> Actually, the, the world is not moving. Their mind is moving. Uh, but they are still. So in the same way, when your mind becomes steady and still, then you realize that I thought I was going here and there and doing so many things. <laughs> but now I understand I was not moving. Hmm? Only body, mind and senses were moving and I was always still. Actually. So in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, hmm? person who is situated in knowledge, he knows that when he is walking, talking, eating, standing, sitting, opening and closing his eyes, that only the senses are engaged with the objects, but naiva kinchit karomiti, but I am not doing it, I am not doing it. So, in that state, chitaikagra, steadiness, nishta, there comes shakshitva, sakshi, Sakshi means uh, the witness. Now, we don't identify as the participant, but as the witness. See, Krishna is described in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Jagat swapa shushuptin cha gunato buddhi prittaya tasam bilakshano jiva shakshitvaina vinishtita. That we are experiencing three stages of consciousness. Jagrat, sometimes we are awake. Swapa, sometimes we are dreaming. And the Shushupti, deep sleep. In these three stages, we are only the witness. These three states of consciousness are Gunato Buddhi Prittaya. They are only the movements of the psychological body, buddhi. So, tasam vilakshano jiva, the jiva is vilakshano, that means distinct in characteristic from these various states of the intelligence. Sakshitvena vinishtitaha is identified by the quality of being the witness of those states. When we are awake, our body, mind and senses, everything is functioning. But when we go to sleep, then we lose consciousness of the body, only the mind is functioning. And when we go to deep sleep, then even the mind is dissolved 
and we experience nothing. So come on, I'll swap some. Now I can the way to some. The Upanishad says that the jiva is an individual. The soul has its own ego. It is not that when one becomes free from the material ego, then everything is Brahman. And there's no individuality. So the Upanishad says, Sukama Swapsam. I slept very happily. I did not know anything. At that time when I was in deep sleep, I was not aware of anything. So, that means that there is some memory, slight memory of what it was like, the impression of being in deep sleep. So if in deep sleep when the ego is dissolved, then there was no uh, substrata for that ego. In, in other words, they would know e this, if the soul did not have an individual ego, then when the material ego dissolved, then there would be no one to remember. So the Upanishads give this example to show that one should become free from the material ego, but the soul also is an individual. So one should become situated in the, in the Abhiman of the soul. Jivera Sarupai Krishna Nintendas. I am Krishna's eternal servant. So, when steadiness comes, then, before, we were thinking, I am doing everything. Including, we were thinking, I am doing bhakti. I am chanting, everyone listen to me. Haribol, <laughs> But when our awareness of life that was inverted upside down is flipped the right way up. Now we see. No. Every chance I have to engage in Krishna's service is Krishna's mercy coming to me. You take your mala. Hey Krishna. That means I am not chanting. Krishna's name is coming. I am so fortunate. Now Krishna's name is coming to me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Oh, now Krishna's pastimes are playing in my ears when we listen to Harikatha. Now, Mahaprasadam has come. All the, all the activities of bhakti, they become very relishable. So, after this stage of nishta comes ruchi. This is chapter 4. Ruchi. This experience. So, now we come to chapter 4. It is not an ordinary thing. This is it's very psychological and it's already, practically speaking, like another planet compared to the general state of consciousness. But you have to come there. Sila Sanat Goswami Pad said, pure bhakti does not begin before shakshitra. First attain that state of shakshitra, and then after that we experience the actual swarup of bhakti, the actual nature of bhakti. What is the nature of bhakti? It is the vilas of swarup shakti. It is the play of Krishna's internal potency, descending onto the senses and mind of the devotee. So, try to be very steady and consistent in your practice. You don't have to do something spectacular. Oh, Gurudev, I have built a 77-foot skyscraper <laughs> for Krishna, named after me. <laughs> but I did it for Krishna. So, Sometimes, in the name of bhakti, people, they want to only inflate their own ego. They're trying to get pratishta. So, this is not the thing. The main thing is to 
be free from duplicity. That the devotee is sincere in every second of the day. In each second, in a humble way, try to be engaged in the service of Guru and the service of Harina. Chanting and serving for Krishna's pleasure, not for something for ourselves. And when we are just simple, Sarlata is there, simplicity, then Bhakti is immediately effective. Immediately effective means the spurti. Some slight visions of transcendence will begin to appear. So try to be very steady. Srila Bhaktino Thakur has said, the Vidhi Marga Arata Jane Swadinatra Ratnadane Raga Marga Karena Pravesh. If a person very carefully, meticulously, with attention to detail, is trying to follow the practices of Bhakti, conscientious, they are following the rules and regulations. Gradually, their intelligence that was always telling them, oh, now you have to do this, now you have to do this. Now it's this time, you have to wake up the deities. Go, 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 Kula, Nanda, Yashoda, Nandavara, Uttishtara, Ryasadam, Pratara, Sishchakatpati. Wake up the deities, wash their hands and mouths, clean their teeth with the toothbrush. All these things, you do. All the practices of bhakti at the right time, according to the rules and regulations of scripture. Your intelligence was telling you, you have to do this, now do this, now do this. Gradually, gradually, Swadinata, Swadinatna, Ratna Dani. You will receive the jewel of independence. That means that after some time, by being steady, a taste will appear in that. And then you will not be dependent on your intelligence telling you, now do this, now do this. But rather, a free flow, a free expression of devotion will begin to manifest. So, in Bhagavad Gita, see Krishna said, Tasmat Shastra Pramanam Te Karya Akarya Vyavyastito Gyatva Shastra Vidanuktam Karma Kartum Ihahasi one should know what is the proper behavior and the practices from scripture. Shastra is the praman. So our acharyas have explained the practices of bhakti in their uh, books, Achandipika, Raghavat, Chandrika, sorry, Hari Bhakti Vilas. In uh, how to serve the deities and follow Vaidhi Bhakti. And in Raghavat Machandrika, Srila Vishnu Chakutako has shown how by associating with devotees who have greed, gradually we also develop greed. But still, even a person who has developed greed outwardly should follow the rules and regulations. Because there's even a very high level of devotee, there's always some chance of becoming contaminated again. <laughs> and so we are protected by following, observing the rules and regulations of scripture. So Krishna said you should know this from scripture, Kari Kara Vyavastito. What should be done and which, what should not be done. Do the things that you should do and very carefully avoid things that should not be done. Otherwise, Yaha Shastra Vidim Utsritya Vartate Kama Karakaha Nasa Siddhim Avapnoti Nasukam Na Param Katim. See, Krishna said, those who whimsically neglect the disciplined, principled life which is recommended by the scripture. If a person has a chaotic life, unpredictable and chaotic existence, then what will happen to them? 
Vatan Tai Kama Karaka. They just act according to their desire. Nasa Siddhima Vatnoti. They will not get Siddhi. They will not become perfect. What to speak of becoming perfect? Nasukam, Naparam Gate. They will not even be happy. The mind is saying, oh, if I do what I want, I'll be happy. But if you do what you want, you'll be miserable. Do what Shastra says. Follow what Gurudev says. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitete Koriya Aikya Guru Sadhu Shastra Vakya Chitete Koriya Aikya So, one cannot attain perfection, he cannot attain his goal of life, he cannot even be happy. If he is whimsical, unmethodolog unmethodological, Undisciplined, unprincipled, no. So try to be conservative in this regard and observe the rules and regulations of scripture. Srila Rupa Goswami Pad said, Sravanam Kirtana Dini Vaidi Bhaktuditani Tu Yanyangani Chitanyata Vigyani Manishibi Manishibi Very thoughtful persons with profound realization. They have said, that those who are on the path of Raganuga Bhakti, still they follow the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti. A few things they neglect only. They don't do Anganyas, installing the forms of the Lord in the body, they don't do Anganyas. Pranayama as part of Archa. They don't do uh, Mudras all this because the in Archan to Lord Narayan it's alright but in Archan to Radha and Krishna then Aishwarya the mood of Aishwarya Vaikuntha will come if you use mudras no mudras and also no Dwarka Dhyan meditation oh Rukmini Satyabhana so nice don't meditate on because the mood of Dwarka is unfavorable and uh, contradictory to the mood of Braja. But otherwise, all the other things, uh, we should observe very carefully. So, in Gita Krishna says, Sardavan Bhajate Jnanam Labate Jnanam Sardavan Labate Jnanam That person who has faith in the instruction of Guru and the instruction of scriptures, what will happen? They attain transcendental knowledge. But Sangsayatma Vinashati, those who have a doubt in the teachings of Guru and scripture, then they become ruined. So, if you want to experience your consciousness, or flip from the Inverted misunderstanding, viparya asmriti, and come to the state of peacefulness and experience the swoop of pure bhakti. Try to be very steady and consistent in your practice every day. The hard work, really, others cannot see. Hmm? How you are chanting every day with great honor, remembering Gayatri mantras every day with a great honor. These activities, they are not for show. Sure. Others cannot see. So if there is a desire for Pratishta, the person who wants honor from others tends to neglect these essential things. And then, spiritual life becomes only for show. So, pay attention to the things which are essential. And be steady in that. Gradually, gradually, Chitaikagra, the, the one-pointedness of the Chitta will come. Then one will start to experience the nature of pure bhakti. From, uh, from Nishta, one will come to Ruchi. So now we're coming to the first verse of chapter 4. Mahaprabhu is describing the sentiment of the devotee who has attained this elevated position. 
नजनम नजनम ना सुंदरिम कवितंबा जगदीश कामये मामा जन्मनि जन्मनि श्वरे भावतन भक्ति अहोयत की त्वयि ओ जगदीश ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ़ द यूनिवर्स नजनम I don't desire wealth. Na jana. I don't desire followers. That also means progeny. To have like a prajapati daksha to populate the universe with so many children. That means I am great. I want to replicate myself. If there were more of me in the world, it would be a better place. It's very deeply rooted. It's very deeply rooted desire. So, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. Sundarim kavita means beautiful poetry. Here, that means really material education. Because we acquire prestige. If you have MA, PhD, everything after your name, then you get so much prestige. So, I don't want these things. Then what do you want? Mama Janmani Janmanishwari. Now here, Ishwara means Pranishwara. Here, the first Isha is Lord of the Universe. I don't want any things in this universe. And then secondly, Janmani Janmanishwari. Here means my Pranada. The Lord of my Pran. All I want is that birth after birth, Bhavatad Bhakti Ahoyti Ki Tvayi, causeless, that means, Fal Anusandan Rahita, Fal is fruit, and Anusandan means searching. So I want Bhakti which is not performed to get something else, it's just for your happiness. So Bhavatad Bhakti Ahoyti Ki Tvayi, I just want that this Unalloyed devotion to your lotus feet will awaken in my heart. Janmane Janma. Janmane Janma, birth after birth. So that also indicates I don't desire liberation. I'm ready to take birth again. As long as I have devotion to you. Now, what is the inner mood of this verse? The devotee is chanting. Deeply, some realization is coming in the stage of Nista, Krishna's form and opulent qualities. Now Ruchi is coming, some, some realization of Krishna's sweetness. But, in the stage of Ruchi, still there is no realization of your Swarup. Because there is still a scent of the um, connection with the sensual pleasure. Hmm? Those impressions are still there, slightly, and as long as there is some connection with the sensual happiness, then the Siddha Deya will not manifest. It's a very serious business. Hmm? Hmm? Don't think you can be in bodily consciousness and meditate on Siddha Deya. This is just... <laughs> you can get a job in a circus as a clown. <laughs> because this is just a joke. <laughs> but it's very sad. <laughs> the Siddha Deya will... It is an avirbhav. It is an appearance. It is not something that can be constructed from the dead, insentient material element called manas or buddhi or ahankar. Even the mind is actually a transformation of ego. So the devotee in Ruchi, now he, can, he has some spurti of the form of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, the associates of Krishna, how they are serving. And he wants to serve. But his own spiritual form by which he can serve is not coming. Also, that realization, the Ruchi, what is Ruchi? Abhilas. 
which is Abilas. Desire. And how is that Abilas? Bhagavad Prapti Abilas. Bhagavad Prapti Abilas. I want to attain Krishna and Anukulya Abilas to render favorable service and so hard Abilas to have an intimate friendship and just the feeling of, the, of a well-wisher always desiring his happiness. That Abilas is coming. That is Ruchi. But it's Buddhi Purvaka. In other words, the devotee, he sings a verse, meditates on a verse, chants the holy name, and by his volition, then that Abilas appears in his heart. And sometimes it doesn't. And then he applies his intelligence again. And sometimes it doesn't. So at that time, where he, it's not swarasiki, it's not natural, and he has to apply his intelligence in order to experience that, that's when the devotee is condemning himself. What's wrong with me? Why am I not feeling continuously the spontaneous devotion? Why do I keep coming back to this state where I have to, by my volition, apply my intelligence? This is my fault. This is my contamination. This is my thirst for the world. Alas, I am so wicked. You see, it's only when the contrast between the spiritual realization and the absence of spiritual realization is there that the devotee really feels that he's fallen. Because when we are here just tasting the world with our senses all the time and we have no experience of anything higher, then fallen? I'm not fallen. <laughs> but when you can see <laughs> there <laughs> something of Vrindavan, then you realize Ah, and then you become absorbed, and then ah, and then you have to apply the intelligence again, and then the uh, abilas appears. So this is the psychological state described here in this verse. So that's when the devotee sees the absolute necessity. I am very fallen. I am very attached. I ha my surup is not manifesting. Oh my Lord! Na danam, na janam, na sundarim kavitam ba jagadisha kame. Mama janmani janmani shri bhavatad bhakti ahoy tikitoni. What a profound emotion. Mahapu was expressed. So, in his commentary, Srila Gurudev explains that the renunciation of sensual happiness takes place in two ways. Anvai, positively or directly, and Vyatirek, negative or indirectly. So, Anvai, the direct aspect of renunciation is positive engagement in Krishna's service that is described Anakul Yena Krishna Anushriyam Bhakti Uttama the continuous unbroken cultivation of all endeavors of the body, mind and words which are meant exclusively for the benefit of Sri Krishna under the guidance of our spiritual authorities that is Uttama Bhakti so then Pyatirek, the negative aspect of renunciation is expressed in the first line of that verse Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Gyana Kama Dhinabhutam to give up all other desires and the absence of the coverings of karma and Gyan so in this verse Na Danam Na Janam Na Sundarim Kavitam Va Jagadisha Kamaye is Vyatirek expression the indirect expression that is to give up and then the Mama Janmani Janmani Sharei Bhavatat Bhakti Ahoyti Ki Tvai is Andvai direct like Anukulya in a Krishna Nushilana Bhakti Uttama so now I'm just selecting some verses from here and there so we can touch each chapter of Bhajan Rahas, come to verse uh, 8. This is from the Padma Purana. 
Shoka Marsh Adi Be Bavair Akrantam Yasya Manasam Katam Tantram Kundasya Sporti Sambhavanabhavit Shoka means lamentation Amarsha Indignation Someone has disrespected me Oh, I'm burning My heart is on fire Where's my atom bomb? No one that person. Gurudev used to say, <laughs> in our conditioned state, even if a mosquito bites us, then we say, where is my atom bomb? <laughs> Poor mosquito. Shoka, <laughs> Amarsha. Adibir, etc. So that means <coughs> calm, crowd, low, moha, mother, matsarya, lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, and bewilderment. As long as these akrantam yasya manasam, one's mind is attacked by these sentiments, then katam tantra, how will it be possible for that person, mukundasya sportisambhava, how will it be possible for that person to have a sporty, a vision of Mukunda Krishna in their heart? Now remember we discussed when the chitta is steady, it becomes, has the quality Bhagavad Bimba Grahitva, the power to catch the reflection of the Lord. So, such sporties are the life and soul of the devotee. If a devotee is practicing steadily and he's trying to be absorbed from time to time, some glimpse of the beauty of Sri Krishna must come in his heart. If these purities are not coming, then that devotee is sure to become involved in worldly activities. If you're not attracted to Krishna, you will be attracted to Maya. So it's essential that the devotee engage in such a way uh, with a great steadiness so some sporty can come and that impels us and propels us, enthuses us to apply ourselves with greater and greater determination. And if some time will go by without the drops of realization, then what happens? Oh, the curtain of Maya covers us and we float away in the dream of material existence. <laughs> so, this is why Sadhu Sangha is very important. Because in our lower stage, we don't have much eligibility. We are not very qualified to have some higher experience. But, Bhava Bhava Go Janato Yada Bhavets Janasyata Hyachita Satsamagama Satsangama Yahita Daiva Satkato Pravre Shetva Ijayate Rati When we are in the association of a Vaishnava, then Satkato means just by listening. The power of the Harikata can produce a sporty. A little vision. We feel something. A glow of the heart. Some fragrance of the divine realm. Ah, Krishna is real. It's a great relief. We're talking about God. Yes, I believe in God. But actually, there are so many doubts. But when we come in Sadhu Sangha, an experience is there. Just by hearing Harikata, and that samskar uh, impels us. By that samskar, we are inspired to engage more and more in bhakti. But if we stay far away from sadhu sangha, we don't have enough power ourselves to experience something higher. And also, nothing is coming from the association. Then, slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, our bhakti becomes mixed. First becomes mixed with some karma and some gyan. And then it becomes, then it's just karma and gyan. And the bhakti will go away as well. So, it's essential to have sadhu sangha, good association again and again. And essential to apply oneself to become steady so that we can 
have some inspiration from inside. Gurudev used to give an example. When there's a drought, it doesn't rain for a long time. Then all the small plants, they become dry, they dry up and they die. But the bigger trees, they stay green. Why? Because the small plants, their roots don't go deep in the earth. But the tree, its roots go deep and it can take water from the ground. So when a person becomes more advanced in bhakti, though they still want sadhu sangha, and they need also sadhu sangha to progress to higher and higher levels, but some or other, they can survive for some time by drinking from within. Some realization is coming from their own practice. So, in the commentary, Srila Gurudev gives a, a beautiful example. Because this verse says, Padma Prani is saying, Shoka Mahashadi Bhagavan, if someone's heart is attacked by lamentation, indignation and so on, then how can that person have a spurti, a realization, catch the reflection of Krishna in their heart? How is it possible? So one must give up all lamentation. So Srila Gurudev is quoting a pastime of Shiva's Thakur. One day, in the evening time, Mahaprabhu, you know, he used to come every evening to Shiva's Thakur's house and they would engage in Harinam Sankirtan. And while the Sankirtan was going on, Shiva Stakuri heard some sound coming from the next room, some crying. And he went there and saw his two wives were there and other family members and they were crying. His son had died. Shiva Stakuri said, why are you crying? He said, oh, your son has died. Huh? Shiva Stakuri said, stop crying. Don't make any noise. You'll disturb the kirtan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you disturb Mahaprabhu's kirtan, not only will you lose a son, you'll lose a husband also. <laughs> and then Shiva Stako went back into the kirtan. <laughs> After some time, Mahaprabhu said, It seems that there's a shadow of melancholy has mm, fallen upon this house. Shiva Stakur said, My Lord, how can there be anything inauspicious in your presence? So then some other devotees told Mahabu, oh, Shiva Stakur's son passed away during your kirtan. Then Mahaprabhu realized that Shiva Stakur was trying to stay cheerful. And just please Mahaprabhu and be completely unaffected by any worldly loss. If we lose someone who is dear to us, forget that. If we lose our phone, <laughs> then we can become very upset. So I've heard. I, in my whole life I never had a phone. <laughs> but, but I've seen people <laughs> crying over there. Latest, losing their latest iPhone. So, <laughs> but if we lose some a person, a family member who is very dear to us, <sighs> it can be very devastating. I have seen devotees, and they lose a family member, and then they just, they can't do anything. Then it becomes exposed how deep the realization really is. If the realization is deep, then they will understand that this soul has just been relocated to a better situation. No lamentation at all. So, tears came in the eyes of Mahaprabhu and he looked at Shiva Stakura. He said, how could I ever give up a devotee like Srivas, who has no care even for the loss of his own son, because of his dedication to my service. So the reason why Mahaprabhu was crying is because 
he had decided that he would take sannyas and leave Navadvi. And now he was seeing Shiva's Thakur's dedication was so dense, it was impenetrable by any worldly circumstance. This is the thing, that our devotion has to be so dense that the worldly circumstances cannot penetrate it. And seeing that, he was feeling already separation. How will I leave now to him and take sannyas? Why? Because the Lord, see Krishna, he stays where he's loved. And this is true of anyone actually. Everyone wants to be in the place where they're loved. If we, if there's no love anywhere, then we go looking for some love somewhere. <laughs> so the Lord is also like that. He stays where there is the love. And that's why deeply we understand that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually never leaves Navadvi. <laughs> this is a special naimitic pastime. <laughs> he's leaving and taking sannyas, but he's always there in his Aprakat Lila and he never leaves. The form with long hair as a Grihastha Vishwam Mishra, uh, Rasik Nimai, that is the eternal Swarup that we that we worship. But he's manifested this pastime in this world uh, to benefit us. So, Shokumar Shari Bir Bhavai. Remember, as long as you become emotional, as long as your mind becomes turbulent and you are, you can be triggered by some circumstances, then you cannot realize Krishna. So, in all situations, stay calm and in equilibrium. In Bhagavad Gita, see Krishna said, Samatvam Yoga Ujjate. Yoga is equilibrium of mind. Now we're coming to uh, verse 10. Very nice. So, this is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti Parishanu Bhavo Virakti Anyata Chaisa Tika Egakala Prapadima Nasya Yatasana Sus Pusti Pusti Shud Apayonu Gasa. This is a very important verse. All the preachers they should know it. <clears throat> Just as when we eat, we get three results. Tusti means satisfaction. Pushti, nourishment, strength and energy come. And should apaya, hunger disappears. And that is anuga, anugasam. That means it is uh, proportionate to each bite. So when you take one bite, you get a little satisfaction, a little strength, and hunger goes a little bit away. When you bite more, then you get more satisfaction, more strength, and, until your hunger is completely gone. So it's step by step. So just as with each bite, these three results come from eating, so in the same way, Ekakala, at the same time, Prabhupada for a person who is surrendered to see Krishna, then they experience three things, Bhakti, Pareshanu Bhav, and Virakti. So Bhakti means the save of Riti, the tendency to serve. And that service tendency gives tushti satisfaction. Because Yasmin Tushte Jigat Tushta. When Krishna is satisfied, the person who is satisfying him is satisfied. When you decorate your face, if you look in the mirror, your face is decorated in the mirror also. So in the same way, because we are part and parcel of Krishna, when we decorate Krishna, then we become beautiful. <laughs> when we please Krishna, we are automatically pleased. You don't have to decorate your face and also decorate the reflection. It's separately. 
So in the same way, we don't have to separately endeavor for our happiness. Understand? Everyone's endeavoring, trying to become happy. That's the wrong method. We try to please Krishna automatically tushti. We experience satisfaction. Then, paresha anubhav. Second one. That is, means, realization. Para, it's translated to Isha, is Supreme Lord. Anubhav means realization. When we engage in bhakti, then realization comes. The sportis begin to appear in the heart. So that is compa compared to pushti, nourishment. Because when you eat the food and you're nourished by it, strength comes. So in the same way, the devotee becomes stronger and stronger by the experience of the internal realization. The more realization comes, the more ecstatic the devotee comes. The more strongly he is engaged. And then Virakti, that is compared to the go uh, hunger going away, the devotee becomes detached. So, uh, these three things come at the same time. If a person is engaged in bhakti, but they're not becoming detached, they're still disturbed by worldly things. Their desires and attachments are increasing. Then there's some loophole. It means that it looks like they're practicing bhakti, but not really. There's some duplicity there. It's only going through the motions, but the heart is not committed. So then, now, Srila Bhakti Thakur is uh, quoting now two prayers by Prahlad Maharaj. Now, this is 11 and 12. Uh, from the seventh canto. Naitan manastava katasu vaikuntanata sampriyate durita dushta masadu tivram kamaturam harshashoka Vayashanartam tasmin katam tabakatim vim mrishami dinaha. Prahlad Maharaj, he's praying, Lord Nishingadev has appeared. <laughs> because he wanted to prove true the words of Prahlad Maharaj. When Hiranyakashipu said, Where is your Lord? Is he in this pillar? Then Prahlad Maharaj looked and Lord Nishingad, he could see he had this party of Lord Nishingad in the pillar, winking at him. <laughs> and Prahlad Maharaj said to Hiranikas, well, yes, he's there. Oh, let me see him save you now when I sever your head from your body. And Hiranikas punched the pillar and it cracked. Then there was a huge roaring sound causing the whole universe to tremble. And Lord Nishingadev appeared and after playing with Hiranyakashipu for some time, he tore him apart and he was roaring. Every, everyone was afraid to approach him. Brahma was afraid, Shiva was afraid, Lakshmi Devi was afraid. So they asked Prahlad, you go in. So Prahlad Maharaj is coming. These are the prayers uh, that Prahlad Maharaj is offering. He said, Oh Vaikuntha Nath, O oh Lord of Vaikuntha, my mind is polluted by the desire to sin. How can I explain to you the suffering of my mind, which is constantly afflicted by desires? My mind being strongly attached to these desires is sometimes overpowered by happiness and sometimes overpowered by distress and sometimes by fear. My mind is always engaged in trying to collect money and material happiness. And my mind finds no taste in the narrations of your pastimes. If I cannot have taste in hearing about your pastimes, how will I be able to do smarana? Meditate on your pastimes. First Ravan, here. Then Kirtan. Then Kirtan of Prabhavai Smarna Hebe. From the power of Kirtan comes the power to remember. So, Prahlad Maharaj is praying in this way. It 
sounds like a gross materialist. I'm always attached to desires. I get happiness and distress and fear. My mind is unsteady, unstable. How will I remember you? It sounds like, no. This is the prayer of the advanced devotee, Srila Dolpralak Maharaj is eternally perfect. Srila Bhakti Thakur is saying this is appropriate for the devotee in the stage of Ruchi. Why? Because he's experienced some sweetness and he wants to relish that sweetness constantly. But it's not, there's not a constant relishment. And therefore, the devotee feels extremely humble, extremely incompetent. Why can I not? Here smaran means continuously remember you. And so he repents. Why is my mind going away from you into these other things? So, this is uh, intense manifestation of humility. And really, Prem and humility, they are mutually the cause and effect of each other. They have a karya karna paraspara karya karna sambandha, mutual cause and effect of each other. Where there's more humility, there's more prem. Humility increases prem, and prem increases humility, and humility increases prem. <laughs> So then, Srila Bhakti Nautaka was giving the, ne the very next prayer also spoken by uh, Prahlad Maharaj. Jivai kato chut vikashati ma vitripta shishnon yatas tvag udaram sravanam kutaschit granon yatas chapaladrik kvachakama shaktir bhavya sapatna eva geya patin lunanti. Now Prahlad Maharaj is going more deeply into his suffering condition. Why is it that I cannot be always absorbed? Why is my remembrance interrupted again and again? Here's the answer. Oh Achuta! My tongue is pulling me towards relishable flavors. My genitals are pulling me towards beautiful women. My stomach is pulling me towards the foodstuffs which are harmful. My ears are pulling me towards sweet, musical, worldly sounds. My eyes are pulling me towards the external physical beauty. And my sense of touch is hankering to touch soft things. In this way, all of my sense organs are dragging my mind towards their various sense objects. Oh Krishna, my situation is exactly like a lusty man who was so lusty he decided to marry many wives and each one of his wives is trying to drag him towards her own room. <laughs> In such a condition how can I remember you and your form and qualities and pastimes? So even a person who is renounced. Actually, in this stage, Prahlad Maharaj is only about five years old. So he's not married yet. <laughs> he gets married later. But, even one who is not married, or one who is brahmachari, or one who is a sannyasi, they can also have six wives. That means each one of the each one of the five senses each one of the five senses and the mind. And Prahlad Maharaj is giving this image of a man, he has so many wives and they're all pulling him here and there. And he tries to satisfy them. But the more he tries to satisfy them, the less capable of satisfying them he becomes. And so, 
all his strength, his energy, everything is gone. He is not happy. The wives are not happy. It's a complete disaster. So, that is our situation in bodily consciousness. So, Plad Maharaj, in his humility, he is praying in this way to Lord Nishingade. And you should see it in the context of the devotee who has come in the state of Ruchi. Some sweetness of realization is there, but not continuously. It's not Swarasiki. In the stage of Asakti, it will be a Swarasiki Abhilas. And the interruption is just intolerable for him. So then, coming to Sula Bhaktinoda Thakur is giving the remedy. How can one overcome this terrible situation of being pulled here and there? This is a verse spoken by Sanat Kumar in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, sorry, excuse me. No, this is fourth canto of Srimad. This is spoken by Prithu Maharaj. He says, Na kame na tatrapya ham kachin, na yatr yusmach charanam buja savaha, mahatman thari dayam mukachuto, vidat swakana yutam esha me baraha. Oh my Lord, I don't want liberation because I receive no pleasure in hearing any other topic except for the narrations of the nectar of your lotus feet. Note it down. I only want to hear the narration of the nectar of your lotus feet. That nectar, where does it come from? It emanates Mahatamantaridayan Mukachito from the mouths of saintly persons. Here, mukha means from the mouth. But it's not actually coming from the mouth. Mahatama antaridayam. It is coming from their heart. And then from the mouth. Because that is real Harikata. Harikata is not someone sits down and then they remember the list of things to say and then they regurgitate the shopping list of verses this is not harikata harikata means tasmin mahan mukartam marubis charitra that the sadhu is realizing the sweetness of krishna and that vision is actually doing parina the vision in his heart is transformed into sound. That's what Mukarita means. Mukarita means Madhubic Charita. That the pastimes of Madhubic Krishna become Mukarita, transformed into a verbal expression. And that is nectar. So in the last line he's saying, Vidatsva Karnayutam Esha Mevara. So, my Lord, Prithu Maharaj is praying, the only boon that I beg from you is that you give me 10,000 years <laughs> to hear this sweet Harikata emanating from the hearts of your devotees. So, in this verse, Prithu Maharaj is expressing the greed to hear Harikata. And uh, this is the actual medicine by which the distraction of the mind can be eradicated. Because more and more taste will come and ruchi will become asakti. 
the Avilas, the desire service desires, which word? Buddhi Bodhavaka will become Swarasiki. Natural, spontaneous. So now, uh, come to 19. No, no, 22. 22. So then this verse, tw this is spoken by Sanat Kumar to Prithu Maharaj. Sanat Kumar is uh, the guru of Prithu Maharaj. Also fourth canto. Very important verse. Yat pad palava palas vilas bhaktya kamashayam gratitam udgat gratayan tisantaha tadvanna rakta matayo yatayo piruta srotaga nastamaranam pajabasudevam. Sanukuma is saying that Santaha. The saints who they are relishing through bhakti, bhaktya, yatpada pankaja palasa vilasa bhaktya. Through devotion, they relish the vilas, the play of the pankaja palasa, of the, um, of the petals of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So they, karmashan gratitam udgratayanti, they can untie the knots. Udgratayanti means to untie gratitam, the tied knots of what? Karmashayam. Here, Ashai means chitta. And karmashayam means the chitta which is filled with the impressions. So that condensed mass of impressions in the chitta is the ahankar ego. Vasana mai ahankar. And that is a knot which ties the, the consciousness of the soul to the physical body. So here karmashayam means uh, the the chitta full of impressions, that is the vasana maya hankar. Gratitam udgratayanti, that knot is untied by relishing through bhakti the beautiful pastimes, the vilas of the pankajapalasa. Just like a, a lotus has filaments. So Krishna's feet are like a lotus and his toes are. So what are the pastimes of Krishna's toes? These have the power to untie that knot in the heart. Now in the second part of the verse is Tadvan Narekta Matayo Yatayo Piruddha Srota Ganasta Maranam Bajavasu Deva. But Yatayo, that means the Yatis, Sanyasis, the impersonalist Sanyasis. Those who have renounced everything to try to get Mukti liberation, three lines Tilak. Aham Brahmasmi, stay in Kashi. So those types of sannyasis or impersonalists, Rikta Matayo, Rikta Matayo Yatayo, they are yatis with a Rikta Mati, empty mind. They are trying to empty their mind. But they cannot stop the flow of desires coming out from the heart. That knot is there, full of impressions of desires, and they try. Yatayo Piruta. They are trying to stop those desires from coming. Strota Ganas. But they're flowing like a river. It's impossible. Only the devotees can stop that flow of desires. Because Krishna puts his lotus foot there. They, don't, they can't come out there. Even if the devotee has some desires, but he's trying to be devoted, Krishna very mercifully puts his foot. No more. Stop. No more flow. So, 
How the devotee relishes the sweetness of Sri Krishna, which is the medicine which counteracts those desires, which undoes the knot in the heart. Chitam sukhena bhavata paritam griheshu Yandeva satyuta karava pigriya kritte Pado padam na chaltestava padam bulat Yama katam rajamato karavami kimba See Krishna played upon his flute. The sound of the flute was like a thief. Krishna is like the boss of the thieves. If there's a leader of a gang, he doesn't do the stealing himself. He sends his assistants. So Krishna stayed in one place and played his flute. And the Venu Nad went out to steal. So when a thief comes, they don't use the front door. Someone might see him. So the thief went around to the side door. That means in the ear, not in the front. Went through the side door, in the ear of the gopis. And quickly went to the treasury room, the heart. In the treasury room of the gopis, there were so many jewels. There Darya, they decorated with beautiful qualities. Darya, patience, Laja, shyness. So, all these jewels in the heart of Brajagopis, then that thief, the Venu Nad, grabbed, stole them, and then quickly went running back to Krishna. So, just as if you're walking on the street and a pickpocket bumps into you and grabs your wallet, and you're not, and then you realize it's him, then you run after him. So, then the gopis, they were running after the sound of Krishna's flute. Come back, come back. <laughs> <laughs> and they arrived at Bhansibhat. But when they got there, Krishna told them, you should go home. Otherwise it will be a big fault for you. Gopis replied, Chitam sukhain bhavata paritam griheshu. Chitam avachitta. Bhavata apharitam was stolen by you. Griheshu yan nevesatthiti. We are not at fault because our chitta was absorbed, Griheshu, in our household. Taking care of our homes and our family, we were absorbed in that. But you stole it. How sukena? Sukena means with ease, very easily. In other words, you didn't have to do any effort to steal our chitta from absorption in our home. You just went, you just blew into your flute. And even one note of your flute came and stole our chitta. And so we are no longer absorbed in anything at all. We don't have a chitta. Our chitta is with you. So, Gopi said, Uta Karav, Apigriya Kritte. Krishna told them to go home. So they're, they're saying, Karavami Kimba, even if we were to go home, what would we do there? Why? Because Uta Karav, that means our hands were also engaged in service. But the mind is the master of the senses. If the mind is not present, then the senses don't function. If I'm speaking now, though you may close your eyes, you cannot close your ears. Your ears are still open. But if your mind is somewhere else, wondering, then when it comes back, it's, oh, what did you say? If the mind is not connected to the sense, then though the ear is open, you didn't hear. So the senses cannot function without the connection of the mind. So Gopi said, our hands were engaged in our housework. 
but you stole our chitta. So now our senses also don't work. <laughs> You told us to go home, but now our senses are not working. We cannot take one step even away from your lotus feet. So Yama Katam Brajam, how can we go back to Braj? And when we get there, what will we do? So question comes, Krishna was playing his flute because he wants to meet with the gopis. Then why did he speak such heartbreaking words and tell them to return? Why? Because Krishna is a rasik shaker. He is the relisher of rasa. Krishna was thinking. Sarvata dvang sarahitam satyapi dvang sakayane yad bhava bandana yuna sa prema parikirtita. Love is a, a bondage of affection which cannot be broken even when there is a cause for it to be broken. So that cause to break the love may come from other circumstances or it may come from the beloved himself. He may make a problem. So Krishna thought, if I speak very cruel, heartbreaking words and send them back, will their love for me go down? No, because it's Prem. Prem cannot be reduced in any way. When I speak to them these cruel words, their love will not go down. It will increase. I want to see it. Krishna wanted to see the glory of the Gopi's love. Another reason is because when the there is a relationship, swakya mood, husband and wife. Then the wife should be submissive. And the husband will be maybe contrary. He may be. But wife should be submissive. But in Parakya Rasa, then the heroine does not owe the hero anything. Hmm? She is the one who is risking everything to come. So he should be submissive and she can be contrary. If both will be submissive or both will be contrary at the same time, it will be Rasa Bas. So one should be submissive, one should be contrary and then Rasa will manifest. But generally, in the Parakya mood, the, the hero is Smaragara Lakandana. <laughs> Please be kind to me. <laughs> and the heroine can be contrary. But, just as in loving affairs, sometimes the hero and heroine, they play the role of each other. That is called Viparita Vilas. So in the same way, Krishna wanted to experience Viparita Vagvilas. Vagvilas means play of words, of speaking. So now by speaking, he'll take the position of the country person and he'll by force make the gopis become submissive. Only in Bhagavilas, through words. Another meaning is this, that on that day when Krishna stole the clothes of the Braj Gopis from the bank of Jamuna and he told them to come out of the water, at that time, see Krishna saw the very beautiful Vigraha, the beautiful Prema Mai, bodies of the Gopis. But now he wanted to see, he saw their outside, now he wants to see inside. But there's a problem. Because love is such that it's not expressed. Gopis always hide their love. Their desires are there, dancing, but covered by a veil of their words. <laughs> Just like a dancer she dances in a veil and wears a veil and covers herself. So, the Braj Gopis desires to meet with Krishna, to serve Krishna, to please Krishna. They are dancing, but always covered by the veil of the Avahitta Bhav, hiding their moods. So, why do they hide their moods? One is that love cannot be fully expressed. But another reason is it's more beautiful when it's hidden. This is why we chant Hare Krishna. Because the name of Radha is there, but it's more beautiful when it's hidden. 
So, uh, in the same way, sometimes beloved sees, oh, my uh, beloved is very beautiful, covered, but sometimes I uh, want to see also without any covering. So Krishna is in, in the same way, yes, how the gopis speak to me, covering their intentions by their words. It's very, very beautiful. But still I want to see, hear some words uncovered. So for that, I'll have to speak somewhat harshly and then see no other option. They'll openly say what they mean. Gopis hide their feeling from Krishna. For example, Pranata Dehina Papakashana Trinacharanam Srinikehitanam Panipanapitam Tehipadam Pujam Krenu in separation, Gopis have said, Pranata Dehinam, Papakashanam. How are your lotus feet? This is humility. When separation is there, then Gopis intensely remember Krishna's soft, fragrant, reddish lotus feet. Oh Krishna, your lotus feet have so many characteristics. If someone bows down, then they become free from all sins. Why? Gopis has said, Krishna, please place your lotus feet on our heart. And they heard Krishna say, I cannot do that, it's sinful. <laughs> so Gopi said, Pranata Dehinam Padma Karshanam. No. Your lotus feet have such a quality, if someone will bow down to them, they will become free from all sin. So how can you become sinful? We saw you dance on the head of Kalia. Kalia was very sinful. But by the touch of your lotus feet, he became very humble. And his wicked nature was all his pap went away. So, when Gopi said, so don't worry about any sins, then they heard Krishna say, but your breast is so hard. How can I put my soft feet there? Gopi said, Trina Charanugam. What are you talking about? Every day you go out into the forest. You take the cows to graze and you're walking barefoot. But the cows, they have hooves, very hard feet. And they don't stick to the soft path. They wander off into the brambles and the thorns. And you go running after them to bring them back. So, don't worry. You should keep your lotus feet on our hearts. See, Krishna said, no, no, I should not. It's quite wrong. Gopi said, no, why? Yasya satsangati pungsa manivatsa satat gunai. One should associate with those who are like oneself. So, your lotus feet are on the top, sharp. On the bottom, they are reddish. And your nails are like shining like moons. So they are reddish and sharp color and with white spot. So also, our heart is like that. Because we smear kasturi on the lower part of our chest, which is sharp, and kumkum on the higher part, which is red, and we decorate with dots of white dots of sandalwood paste. So your feet are three very beautiful, and our heart is very beautiful, so the two beautiful ones should associate together. <laughs> Krishna said, no, 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 because your husband will be very angry. Gopi said, 
You danced on the head of Kalia. You chastise him. So you can also, if our husbands come, you can smash them also. <laughs> Gopi said, and then Krishna said, but you have so much desire in your heart that your chest is very hot. If I put my feet there, I'm afraid I'll be burned. <laughs> Gopi said, Pani padavitam te mukam bujam. Te padam bujam. No, no, no. We saw Kalia. Fire was coming out of his mouth. <laughs> and burning poison. Huh? But you kept your feet there. So no excuses, Krishna. <laughs> so, Krinu Kuche Suna, Krindirichitayam. You please place your lotus feet on our heart. So this is all Avahita. This is all hiding. This is not expression of their mood. This is hiding. Why? Because gopis are acting as if, oh, we are very lusty and you should come and by the touch of your lotus feet, then the lust will be torn from our heart. They're hiding, but their actual mood is that they only love Krishna. They have no lust whatsoever. They see that Krishna is feeling separation from them. He's burning. His lotus feet are burning in separation from them. And Krishna will get relief if he will place his lotus feet on their hearts. So they disguise their pure love as if it were lust. So this is Avahita Bhav. But sometimes Krishna wants them to not disguise their words and directly say what they are feeling. And this is why he told them, go home, don't stay here. This is against Dharma, you will not go to heaven. You become full of fear. And Jukup Sitam Chasavatra, our meeting would be condemned everywhere. So, and Krishna was successful. And Gopis have spoken this. Chitam Sukhena Bhavata Paritam Griheshu. Very easily, just by blowing your flute, you stole our chitta. And now our hands and feet don't work. We are not at fault for coming here. It's your fault because you stole our chitta. And now you're telling us to go home, but we cannot go because our feet don't work. <laughs> and the inner meaning is, now we've become senseless because you stole our chitta. We have come here and because our hands don't work, we cannot even take it back. <laughs> Understand? Just like a thief, if you run after him, then you catch him. Then you can take back what he's stolen. But Gopis are saying, Utukaradhi agree a good day. That our hands don't work even anymore. So we cannot even take back what you have stolen. That means you have to revive us. Only if you will accept us, then you can revive us again. So, give us our consciousness back, Krishna. We are demanding this. This is the Dwani, the implication. Now, problem is, if gopis will openly express their desire, there can be a fault of rasabhas. Because the heroine should not openly express these things. So, Saraswati came, the goddess of learning, and gave the, an opposing meaning to their words. Chitam Sukena. Here, Sukena means with ease. It's in the instrumental case. Or you can take Suke in the locative case and remove the last syllable, becomes Na. Suke Na. Chitam Suke Griya Kritte. O Krishna. Our minds are very happy in our house. Na bhavata paritam. You have not stolen them. <laughs> Understand? So, not chitam suke na. Chitam suke. Griha kritya. Na bhavata paritam. Our minds are very happy in our homes. You have not stolen them. Pada patam na chalatas. Tava pada mula dhyama katam. This katam goes on to the third line. So, how can we not go home at once? <laughs> that means we must leave this place at once. Why? Karavama Kinva. Otherwise, what will we do? Now, instead of meaning our hands don't work, 
Even if we were to go home, then what will we do? Now it means we're going home at once. Otherwise, if we stay here, what will we do? There's nothing to do here in the middle of the forest with you around. <laughs> nothing at all to do. <laughs> so in this way, Gopis are speaking. Pratanamai, they're begging Krishna to accept them. And at the same time, they're also telling him, no, 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 we're leaving at once. <laughs> How much rust is there? In this Vaidvilas, the wordplay of Radha and Krishna. Very, very beautiful. So Srila Bhakti Nata Kaurin, uh, the end of chapter 4 of Bhajan Rahasya, he is given such verses. If a devotee will hear this beautiful katha from the lips of a pure sadhu, then the Abhilas will intensify and become Sorasiki and they'll enter into the stage of Asakti. So then, in the afternoon, we'll try to say a little something about chapter 5, maybe touch 6 or 7, little, uh, in, the, in the last class. Sri Bhajan Rahasya Ki Jai, Srila Bhakti No Thakur Ki Jai, Grantara Srimad Bhagatam Ki Jai, Jai Gaur Premanandi Jai.